Hey guys, uh, we got a kind of a big video here, if you can't exactly tell, and I got a lot to get to, so I'm going to be kind of like reading some notes here. My eyes aren't going to exactly be on the screen. Capiche, no big deal, whatever. Just want to keep everything on track. Um, and the video's kind of going to go in like sections, so if, you know, you've seen it before or there's one part that you just don't really care about, you know, skip ahead a little bit and, uh, you know, get to, get to more of the meat of, you know, whatever's going on. Um, I suppose first off, uh, for those of you guys who saw the credit scrolling and who are really smart and remember that call that call out list that I had, there's quite a handful of names missing. Um, so I just want to explain and I guess apologize slash talk to a few of you guys who are involved in that. Um, names that were not on that were originally expected to be uh, Hayden, Blame Truth, Elo, Dangerous, Shofu, Flaming Spade, and uh, you know, there may be one guy I can't read from here, or forgot, or whatever. Um, so I guess first I kind of want to apologize to a couple of you guys for ignoring and, you know, not replying to you guys, wondering, you know, hey, why is, you know, why aren't we battling with this? Um, with Hayden and Blame Truth, uh, for some reason, I'm not quite sure how, we never seem to got, get to an agreement. Uh, I'd send you a message, you, hey, I'll get back to you, and then never got back, and then I'd send another message, and then you'd send a message. We never really got to agree, so... You know, that sucks, but I just, it's already been way too long since I posted, so I can't really wait anymore. Um, and then the rest of you guys, Elo, Dangerous, Shofu, Spade, etc. Um, thanks to you guys, or I should say thanks to Acoustic Kind slash Panobi, whom, when I made such a big deal of not wanting these vids to go up until it was all done and not wanting my team revealed at all, uh, you were a grand swell guy and went on one of Elo's streams with a large group of people and talked about the entire team and thus a large group of people decided to, you know, talk about it and analyze it and build counter teams before playing me with it. So thanks for that. Um, you know, really glad. That's it's cool stuff. Um, so that's why Elo, Rick, uh, uh, who else was on there? Dangerous, Shofu, Spade, whatever. And that's why I ignored all your guys' challenges and uh, messages and crap like that. I didn't want to tell anyone directly because who knows, Lord knows what types of word would spread and you know make it even worse for the rest of the matches that I did have. So I'd rather just not say anything for the while, for the time being. Um, so yeah, and is that with those guys, Wiley Chase, Black Blastoise, and some guy named PK, whom I don't even know who the hell he is, but I guess he's some you know new guy who must be significant enough to name. But uh, all of you guys helping each other, you know. Oh, don't have this battle unless I'm in the Zat with you for, you know, six-player helping play-by-play -play type of deal. So, you know, whatever, guys. Um, it's uh, pretty dishonorable, I think. Weak, pitiful, pathetic, low-class, disappointing, sophomoric, immature, and pretty much kind of means to me that I've already won by default if there has to be that type of resortation to, uh, in order to have a battle with me when I'm just trying to have some fun with some mixed here and, you know, make a massive series to send forth out with a bang. But, uh, you know, whatever. Um, Elo and Dangerous specifically, uh, with that podcast we had, I thought that was really chill. And uh, after we were recording, we still talked for like another hour. And both of you guys even personally admitted to me about how, you know, it, it sucks when people, you know, know your own team and how you have to do like little series or, you know, just take grab bags and mix, the whole t mix up your guys the whole time because people will take counters to it and it's really cheap and it kind of sucks. And then what happens? So, you know, regardless of whether you admit to one or the other, you're lying in one way. They're contradictory terms. You can't have your cake and eat it, too. So, I don't know. You know what they say. A true friend stabs you in the front. Other people, I don't know. But uh, I guess the worst part from my perspective is, is that I have no high road to take in this case. Do I play against the unrealistic odds and highly risk losing an unfair match? in which nobody else will see it that way and I look like a whiny little brat to claim it? From your side, how would you call something like that? Oh, and I predicted he would go into this that I haven't seen yet and use this move that I just know he has. I mean, how would that go? I just, I can't even imagine pretending to narrate a, a mindset and a train of thought in which you already know what's going to happen. I can't even imagine what that must be like. Do I change my team and then have you guys go, oh, WTF, this isn't the team you've had all along, which one, how would you know? And two, yeah, it's kind of hard to win when you don't know what they have, right? Uh, do I just not play you and look like I'm running away and hiding and backing down from my own challenge, something I sure as hell don't do? 
do I ask for the same type of information on your team and then get into an argument of, oh, no, I don't know anything, or yes, you do, and blah, 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 or who, know, or who knows what you admit that you know, and all sorts of stuff. Um, ah, crap, I lost my spot. Where am I? I mean, which, oh, yeah, do I ask for the same information? Which wouldn't even matter, as there's a counter team built anyway, you know, and six people teaming up in a stream for live play-by-play -play support. My only classy way out of this is to play it as it is with you guys pretending that I don't know that you guys know and win anyway. Which, at that point, I just, I don't even, I refuse to even accept and support such a treacherous backstab as I feel it. Being attacked like that. I don't know what I did to upset so much of the split YouTube community to piss so many people off and get so many daggers and flame my way every single day just making me sick of the internet in general. I don't know what I did, but I must have done something, because I get a lot of it. So, um, I don't know. I guess that's just the way things have to be and the, the way things are these days. Uh, it sucks, and the, you know, there's no real good way out of it. But uh, at this point, I honestly, I don't even care what other people say. I've always stuck to my own beliefs, did things my own way, done what was right and what I felt like take my own path instead of whoring out and it turned out pretty darn good for me for these last few years and there's no way in hell that I'm gonna stop doing what I do at this point in the stage of the game um, specifically while I want to address this as well why the hell do you hate me what do you have against me I have personally never talked to you one-on-one -on -one. I don't understand you're always flaming me and being oh he's so washed up he doesn't know anything new he's such a new blah 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 and yet, then, you're, at the same time, you're so afraid that your friends are going to lose in a battle to me. If I suck that bad, they shouldn't need the help, should they? I mean, I don't know. You've never done anything but flame me down, and yet never attempt to back it up like a man and even say anything to me directly, challenge, etc. Never. I don't, I don't think I've ever personally ever done anything to wrong you. Um, I suppose I could be wrong, but if I did, I don't know where I would start. I don't know a damn thing about you. I don't know what I would even say. So, I, I know, I wish I knew where all that stemmed from, but I don't. So, you know, whatever. At this point, I don't even care. Um, anyway, I want to get to something more positive, as uh, life's a little too short for just throwing hate around. It kind of sucks. So, I want to get to the meat of this video, in which something I've never done before, but I know a lot of other people, especially in the past, have definitely done. Uh, they have a little video which revealed like their team, the stats, the reasons, and stuff like that. Um, I know Maryland specifically had like a really significant one for his amazing team back in the day. It was so good. So good. So I kind of want to do that for this team just because I put in like so much work to it and just had such a long series with it that uh, I kind of know these guys through and through better than anyone else I've ever known of my own guys. And uh, I think it'd be really cool if, you know, watching my narration as I always have really informative and in-depth train of thought type narration that it'd be really cool if you guys already had that perspective instead of trying to listen to it and watch it at the same time so I kinda wanna go down with that um, the team was created for a mixed tier tournament which was a 2-2-2 two, two, two format O-U-U-U-B-L wow O-U-U-U-N-U -U -U too many letters um, and so I kinda figured right off the bat like it's it's rough for me. I've generally always used like four or five OU OU guys, even if they're not the biggest OU guys, they were still really solid. So I didn't really know where to go. I had a perspective of uh, you know, four of my guys on the team automatically have to suck. What am I gonna do? So uh took me a couple of God, it's cold in here all of a sudden. A couple of perspectives I took. Um offense or defense, you know, I feel like the OUs on your team of a mixed tier, you know, it's thirty percent of your team are kind of, kind of going to be the core and just set the tone of what it is that you want to do. There's two ways to go with that. Do you want your OUs to be defensive or do you want your OUs to be offensive? So they kind of shape the whole style and the trend of the team in itself. So um, obviously I feel like if an OU wall can handle OU guys, it sure as hell should be able to handle an NU and a UU sweeper, right? Um, and likewise, if something can sweep an OU, it should be able to sweep an NU as well, though from my experience, a little bit less because the UU guys, you know, they often have different types or slightly different stats in which they may not get used as much, but they definitely have much more niche uses and uh, can be pretty surprising, which is why I've always had difficulty 
fighting new you teams. I just, you know, they're unexpected. You don't necessarily always know what they're capable of. So, um, I wanted to go offense originally, which, you know, is surprising for me, ironically. But, uh, I just figured that DD Knight and a Nasty Plot Mixape would absolutely obliterate this entire type of format. Um, I mean, because what really, if Mixape gets a Nasty Plot up on a Switch, which is really easy to do, especially, even in OU, but especially against an NU, you know, very few OU guys can stand up to that. And, you know, what, how is an NU going to, you know, if something else can't? So, I just figured he would be total terrorization, and I really wanted to use him. Plus, I expected a lot of, like, Scar and Bliss thrown around. And then DD Knight... I mean, he's really not that different from men's guys. He's really not. Once he gets a DD up, he's almost the same thing. A little bit of a speed difference, but he's a lot bulkier. And once the person switches after men's comes in on the Intimidate, you know, at that point, Dragonite's kind of better in the way. He still has an ability that works. He's bulkier. Makes it really easy for him to get that second dance. So you can even just, you know, throw away some points in speed, maybe a little bit in attack, to guarantee you get that second one. And then you're just... You're good to go. It is game over. And that's in OU. I mean, with a plus one life orb, you know, Dragonite in OU takes out a whole ton of stuff in one shot. So sure enough, in NU and UU, he would do the same. So I really wanted to use those guys. And, uh, you know, it was just really tough. But then thinking about where my other four guys would go, I just couldn't trust enough of them to take any hits or be reliable at all. I didn't want to have to have you know, a 6 versus 2 comeback sweep every single bit, like, you know, that'd be awesome, but I didn't want to have to resort to that, so, um, and because there's just so many good lower tier defensive guys, I just couldn't trust, I don't know, I just didn't think that I'd have enough of an advantage that way, maybe one of the two would be awesome, but I couldn't go for both, so I expected a lot of, like, Scar and Bliss and stuff, and then even guys like Weezing or Donphan, Slowbro, Spiritomb, uh, Melodic, you know, stuff like that that's technically, you know, in a lower tier of defensive capabilities is still extremely good, you know? And then I still have to deal with their OUs, which Lord knows what they're going to be. What if their OU has an advantage over mine? I'm screwed. So then it, uh, it made me look towards a more defensive-oriented side with, you know, defensive OUs. So, uh, t -t -t where am I? Yeah, like, I, I knew I had to beat Scar and Bliss. That was really important. Um, specifically Bliss, and uh, I knew I would probably need to be able to outstall stuff just in case. So, as always with me, guys, Bliss is just such a quick thing to pick and look at, and, you know, from the special side, there's just, there really isn't an option that's better. Like, if any, there's, it's just so hard to find one. Anything Bliss can do, or something else can do, on the specials defensively side, Bliss can pretty much just do it better and have more utility. She's got so much utility. And uh, there's specifically a few utilities that I really, really wanted. So uh, I looked at her significantly, and uh, you know, all as you know, 90% of my vids have, I, I'm going to end up picking a Bliss. Uh, ch -ch -ch where'd my spot go? But then I need another counterpart in OU to go along with her. Do I pick one of those sweepers like Mixape? Do I go with something like a Gliscor or a Zapdos or a Dusk Noir? You know, maybe even go old school and pull up Weezing, who counts as a UU, and then I can still use, you know, like that Mixate, for example, which would be totally sick. So, but I figured, you know, the point of me wanting to do all this in the first place was to use new guys that I've never used before, hopefully see a bunch of stuff, and, uh, you know, just, just try and do stuff that was, that was different from what I've done personally. So... I've always loved Zapdos. Him and Zard have always been my two favorite guys since the dawn of time. And I've never really used one. Um, I've used one, like, a couple of times, but it was really bad. His IVs are, like, 4, 22, 26, or no, 4, I don't know. He, he's got 3 or 4 zeros and a 4. I know that. And uh, his highest IV is in his minus nature, I think. So, it's he's he was really bad and, you know, wasn't really real, so to say. So I've never, I consider myself to never truly have used a Zapto, so I just picked him. I'm like, he'll cover Bliss's fighting weakness. Um, I figure I'm going to need something to stop Sizer, most likely. I mean, that's kind of a big deal. If you can't stop Sizer in a mixed tier, you're done. So I figured Zapdos fills both of those really, really well. Um, so I picked him over Gliscor for that. Uh, 
And uh, I also, another significant real thing that helped him with that uh, realization is that when I looked at it, Blaziken can pretty much do the, the work of Ape. Um, I actually kind of have to take a little bit of um, thanks, I guess, as a shout out to the stupid, not stupid, the, the fifth gen dude who's also firefighting who made me look at that and be like, wait, there's multiple firefightings. I guess I could actually use Blaziken instead of Ape. And uh, he fills a UU slot instead of an OU, so that was just really solid. So I saw that and I immediately had to use, you know, Zapdos as an OU wall, and that was just great. Um, plus, I've never really used a Blaziken, so that was amazing. And uh, they're just balancing everything else out. Uh, something to beat Sizer, blah, blah, blah. Couldn't pass up chance, blah, blah, blah. Never really have. Always got there. Um, melodic. Uh, I've always respected, highly respected Melodic, and also feared it quite a bit um, as a bulky water. Every team needs a bulky water somewhere. Um, and Melodic's always just been one of those that was just so good, and I feel like it's been so underrated. And I've never really used one, because I've always just used Bliss instead, that I figured it was probably time to do it. Um, but I wanted to make it more offensive. I didn't want to be too defensive and stall all the time. So, you know, even as much as I love doing that, it does get old, and I understand, blah, blah, blah. I want to do something different. So uh, I wanted to give it a really offensive set, which is going to have, like, over three over 310 special attack, you know, life orb, stuff like that. Um, She's still obviously got some pretty good natural bulk, uh, Marvel scale or recovery move anyway, you know, stuff like that. So she can definitely still fill some major holes defensively, even if she's not defensively oriented. And uh, can pretty much just take the place of the noir of my team of just, I don't know what to do. Let's send out Melodic. You're good at that. You can do something here. So... Um, I also expected Weezing and Donphan to be extremely common due to their utility and the fact that they're UU, which, you know, they're kind of better than that, but, you know, whatever. And uh, I wanted to have a UU that I knew could handle both of them. So uh, Melodic just seemed like a really perfect fit for so many ways. It just fills everything, you know, UU, bulky water, make it offensive, fills holes, never used it before. It's really, really good and underrated, so just tons of stuff. Um... So that's why I wanted to use that. Uh, tch, 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 don't worry, this gets better. Um, that leaves me with my NU, or yeah, my NU slots. So now we filled up the four higher ones. Originally, I wanted Nidoking for SR, Counter Sash, Sucker Punch, stuff like that to lead off with. But uh, he happened to move up to UU since I last looked at him. And uh, I just kind of glanced over at Nidoqueen for a moment. Didn't really know. I'm like, eh, Queen kind of sucks, but I guess we'll take a gander at it. And I see it can do most of the same stuff. It's got Stealth Rock, it can Toxic Spike, it's got Taunt, you know, obviously it's got Stab Earthquake, but ho ho, wait, it can Super Fang as well? So I'm just looking at all of that. I'm like, it's got Poison Point, and, uh, you know, it can neutralize Toxic Spikes just by its type. So I'm like, this is just so good in so many ways. I couldn't believe it. It was just absolutely amazing. And I'm so glad that Nidoking is not NU because I never would have looked at Queen otherwise. And it, she was just so perfect to pass up. Uh, I couldn't. So I, I snatched her up in a heartbeat. Um, which leaves one little guy. And I'm looking at my team and I'm like, got a couple of walls. Actually, you know, almost all of those are walls. You know, the Blaziken I have is mixed and really slow. Like, I don't have a dedicated sweeper. So I need some power on there. Most of the stuff is special so far. So... Granted, Super Fang and S-Toss kind of don't really care um, about, you know, which side you hit on. But I needed something physical, I felt, and uh, I needed something fast as well. Um, I was worried about Scarf Rachi as, uh, you know, it's kind of a big deal. Um, hacks is everyone all over the place, and it's really fast. So I needed something to hit it with. And uh, I'm looking at Tauros. I'm like, Tauros, you're really quick. You're 110 speed. Uh, you got solid attack at 100. Uh, you got Intimidate, which gives you some extra defense, which can be really, really nice should it need it. Um, so we just had a, to a whole ton of positives with him. And uh, I'm always really frightened of Scarf, of Scarf, so I figured he's 110. I can slap a Scarf on him, beat out base 100 Scarfers, not even maxing his speed, and still use Adamant as a boost of sorts for losing Choice Band or Life Orb or whatever. So he just... He just seemed to fall into place perfectly with that and fill a whole ton of holes. 
a whole ton of holes. That's nice. That's nice. Um, so all of those kind of they just seem to fit together one by one into a nice little mold clay. Um, had I gone the offensive route like I originally intended to with Ape and DD Knight or something like that, I probably would have had a mixture of like Weezing, Slowbro, Nitto Queen, Melodic, Spiritom, Tangrowth, Donphan, Clay Doll, you know, a ton of those sick as hell UU and NU walls. Um, Registeel, Reggie Rock. The Reggies are so good in something like this. Um, but I'm not really sure how I could have mixed them together or had it work out, you know, what type of utility I would have been able to use. So um, I'm really glad that I did it the way I did and how it turned out. Um, it turned out far better than I could ever have expected. So I'm really, really glad for that. And uh, it's time to get to the individual breakdown, guys. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. So with Nitto Queen, like I mentioned, she sets up two things, Stealth Rock and Toxic Spikes. Both of them highly important. She's got Taunt to taunt some more stuff, like, you know, another lead that might want to do something. Or uh, if some annoying all-out utility guy comes in, like Clefable or, you know, something dumb like that. And uh, just when you expect, uh, you know, Earthquake to come in that has great coverage and super effective and crap like that, or suppose you have an Intimidate lead, ha! You can't predict a Super Fang, and that's going to hurt anything. You know, whether it's a recovering wall or whatever, um, you know, they're going to lose half their life, most likely recover the next turn or something like that. It's going to make a Sweeper get down really low, allow a Taurus to, Tauros to come in there with his Scarf, you know, something like that, build up with SR and Poison, and just whittle things down there so well, you know, and it works against anything. Like, I don't care if you're Steelix and how much defense you have. You're going to take 200 points. That's awesome. So, um... And just in case you can't ask for any more, I always do, you can throw in Poison Point on the lead, which is so freaking good. Oh, you want to fake me out, Ambipom? That's fine. Now you're poisoned, so you still lose your Sash or whatever the hell, you know? And uh, being able to remove T-Spikes by switching in, just like uh, totally... Or being able to remove T-Spikes by switching in because it's poison type... It totally negated a lot of people from even attempting to set up T-Spikes, which is really good. Um, my team doesn't have a spinner, so this is kind of like my pseudo-spin in a way. I just completely nullify them from even bothering. That is if I don't taunt it at all. So Electric Immunity is, even, is also really beneficial, especially in combination with Melodic. So that's really cool. The list just goes on. What a great poke. Like, I had no idea. I really, really love this thing now. So, um... Uh, tch, 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 many others even blah, blah. She saved, yeah, she's definitely saved me more often than not. Helped make a game possible when it otherwise I was in deep crap. Uh, totally for sure. Um, she provides the first choice for fodder when the need arises, and you always gotta know which poke is first and which poke is second to get rid of. So sometimes it depends on the pokes that they have. You're like, oh well, this guy's gonna be worthless. I may as well fodder him. But sometimes you're just like, you're awesome, but you are my weakest link. You've done the most that you're going to be able to do. Time for you to go. And then uh, when you die, I'll get some initiative out of it. So, And hell, maybe some poison point for being fodder. That's so epic. So deciding on Lum or Sash or Lefties was really hard. You have arguments for all three. But I decided that since I'm going to use Aromatherapy on Bliss, Lum is only really good for getting me up one layer of something on turn one some of the time. So uh, Lefties is, you know, obviously it's good all the time. Still packs great bulk. Sash would be rare as well to be used, especially with me without me having a wish, but it's always a notable option on a lead. So, um, likewise, all my pokes have some speed investment, including this Nidal Queen. So, uh, with me, you never quite know who's going to go first until it's too late. So, you always got to be on your toes and be careful when you're up against something that I've made up. So, uh, that's going to do it for Nidal Queen. And now, let's move on to the next guy. And here we got Tauros, the other NU counterpart on my team. The uh, three-dotted face, three-horned, or three-tailed bull thing. That's totally awesome. So, as I mentioned earlier, Intimidate with Scarf is extremely nice for coming into things like Gyarados, Dragonite, etc. His 110 base speed with Scarf is absolutely amazing and completely necessary to help me survive against things such as Choice Scarf Jirachi, or other fast buggers that shouldn't really carry a scarf in the first place without needing a plus speed nature. So, um, but yeah, because he's 110, he doesn't need a plus speed nature. Um, he can beat out those 100s 
with EV's Despair, so that allows him to rock Adamant and give him a little bit more of a boost um, to slightly make up for the lack of Life Orb. So because he doesn't need to max his speed, he's got a small little chunk invested into his bulk as well to further utilize uh, Intimidate, which uh, actually really plays a significant role at least a couple of times. So it's really nice that I'm able to spare those points in addition to um, being able to outspeed Choice Scarf threats that otherwise, you know, think they have the, the jump on me. So um, he's a powerful physical attacker with great coverage. I mean, you can never, absolutely never argue with Stonequake. Um, and he's got Pursuit to nail some pesky little survivor that I can't stand or need to get rid of. And, of course, he's packing Double Edge for the most power he can muster, which, uh, you know, I don't really have to care about Recoil too much. He's a Scarfer. He should go first and, uh, you know, just dish out hits on guys that should be weakened from dealing with all my other crap. So um, if I'm going to get this much bang for my buck from my NU guys, this is a damn good start. So let's take a closer look at who's next. Ah, Blaziken. Perhaps the unsung hero, perhaps the MVP of this team. And oh my god, I had no idea. Very arguable that he is the most important piece on this team. And a total surprise to me. I just, I couldn't have imagined. Um, I've mentioned several times, I knew Scar and Bliss needed to be beaten. If you cannot beat Bliss, you never deserve to win any sort of tournament. Um, the same goes, likewise, if they don't pack Skarm for... You know, Fortress, Donphan, Weezing, Steelix, Registeel, etc., etc., that can pair with Bliss on the physical side. Bliss something is really what I needed to beat. So this chicken, and, or for that regard, for this chicken, I've actually made him really slow. Um, he's got a small amount of investment in speed to outspeed a few specific walls, such as Crest, that are right around his base, but not too much speed whatsoever. Um, most walls naturally are slow and don't get a whole lot of investment, if any, whatsoever. And his purpose is to break two at once. Um, packing Life Orb, over 200 EVs in each offensive stat, along with a plus nature in one of them. Stab Superpower and Stab Overheat will rip face over anyone. And then uh, hopefully, you know, if it finishes something off or gets it down close enough where I can two hit KO, perhaps they switch into something else. And, uh, you know, he'll break out, he'll break two different walls that way. Maybe they'll think he's all physical or all special to bring in something on the other side, and I'll just blast him from there, too, with, for a surprise KO. I was amazed at how often that actually happened. It was really, really something special. Blaziken was near perfect for me, almost always taking down two walls and just breaking the core defense on somebody else's team. He also packs my only priority move on the team in the form of Vacuum Wave, which I'm sure will be a surprise to at least a few people. So um, obviously it's known that he can use it, but I don't know how often he does. And uh, this one certainly will. So um, rounding it off with the final coverage move of T-Punch, which I don't really expect to use very often, if ever, but uh, it's there just for a few rare things like Starmie, Gyarados, Slowbro, Mantine, etc., and overall, just if I don't want to lower some stats on a prediction, I know I'm going to KO something anyway, or, uh, you know, whatever. Just because I'm not expecting to use it a whole lot doesn't mean I'm not going to take the slot seriously and use something effective there. I'm going to put in the best choice that I can. And uh, T-Punch, it, it fills that role just as I need to. So he's a uh, definite wall breaker mix. And Blaziken, oh my god, was just save the queen, save the day for the win. So, let's see who his UU counterpart is. Ah, Melodic. Melodic, Melodic, Melodic. I'll try to make it slightly brief here, only because I absolutely feel that I need to talk about my three walls at the same time. Um, she wasn't intended to be a wall. She was meant to be offensive. She does have over 310 special attack, and originally packed a life orb to throw down some surprising power when people expect a tank. Um, I later changed it to lefties, as it was just too tempting to gain 23 points every turn instead of lose 36 points. That's a 60-point swing, and I don't want her to die. So um, she's also packing Hydro Pump on there as well for additional power. I don't expect to use it much. I just have to hope it hits the one or two times that I try it. So um, I definitely have uh, some, pack some packing some power in there, even though I did make her slightly a little bit bulkier than I originally intended to, and uh, switch that around. 
she still can pack a, quite a punch and still take quite a beating. So um, she's got Ice Beam on there for the dragons, Gliscor, Grasses, etc. Um, obviously, everyone needs ice somewhere, even though Smogan likes to keep banning all the good ones that are weak to it. And uh, I felt like this was just flat out the best place for it. Um, final move on her, obviously, I'm, Recover is going to be on there. Could be a HP Electric, a status move, perhaps even Sleep Talk, so she can be a Sleep Fodder with Marvel Scale. Many things can go on there. But I actually went a little bit more niche with Confuse Ray. I figured this will help ease prediction of Hydro Pump. Um, so I don't have to feel as uncomfortable about potentially missing um, unexpected switches. People won't know I'm packing Hydro Pump at first either. They'll assume Surf, and uh, they won't know that there's going to be a missed chance and won't have that play into their moves. Um, whatever, you know, when Melodic comes in and threatens a super effective Hydro Pump on something, whatever their best water taker is going to be is going to come in. So HP Electric would be really solid, but I feel Confuse Ray is also very beneficial in that regard as well. Um, in addition to easing prediction, it also can be a last resort move if I feel that I'm in deep crap. I can get a coin flip on my way out of it. Um, she should be able to survive one of just about anything, and uh, nobody likes to stay in with confusion. It might save my bacon. So, um, obviously she can heal herself up too. Rest talk is extremely tempting due to Marvel scale, but as her being my quote-unquote third wall, I didn't want her to be too stally. She has some speed to beat key things that expect to outspeed her by a few points as well. Like I said, with all my guys, I've got some speed. So um, there's a few people who are like, oh, crap, how are you faster? And uh, that would definitely play a big a big role. So always crucial, always crucial, um, especially with Confuse Ray. If I can go faster on something that's going to kick my tail, uh, Confuse Ray, it beats itself up, and then I can just finish it off if need be. So that rounds out my lower tier, guys. Let's take a closer look at my OUs, eh? So here we've got Bliss. Wait, what? You mean that's not what you think Bliss looks like? That's not how you see her? Okay, here's something a little bit more standard that you guys recognize. Bliss. Lover, hater, all the same. I love her to death. But at least this one's a new one. Um, I figured I needed a little bit of everything on this team. Rocks, Taunt, Cleric, Status, Scarfer, Sub, Healing, Priority, etc, etc, etc. They're all sorts of utility. Rapid Spin, you know, all that type of stuff. So I wanted to use Aromatherapy. Um, despite Melodic getting a boost with Marvel Scale, I'd rather not have to worry about status anywhere. Um, so the only utility on this team, I honestly, that I don't have is Phasing and Rapid Spin. But Rocks don't really hurt me that much anyway, and Nidal Queen even gets rid of T-Spikes as it is, so I don't have to worry about it that much whatsoever. So I do lack a Phaser. Um, of course, I have Confuse Ray and Melodic, but, uh, you know, whatever. So... Uh, where was I? I just lost my place. Um, I also figured that in mixed tier, most teams may only have one answer to beat Blissey, and she already beats more than half the game on her own as it is. So in order to be extra, extra brutal and safe, I gave her a Chocoberry and I gave her Counter to allow myself to take any one fighting move, barring a crit, and finish off whatever threw it. And uh, hopefully Blissey has enough left to hang around and stay the night so um which at that point should be you know easy easy pickings easy sittings i should say um it sure sucked not having leftovers i'm not even gonna lie i did not expect how big of a deal that would be um it hurt me a heck of a lot more than i anticipated by far um i think but at the same time i figured if trouble saves me once or twice and i can win because of it that's more than worth it um However, it didn't happen nearly as often as I expected it would, though. Um, I really expected a lot more fighting moves and a lot more things coming into Bliss for that. And it just didn't happen as much as I expected. So um, perhaps the perhaps Chopal wasn't the wisest choice in the world. Um, I certainly think Leftovers would have been more beneficial in the long run more often. But uh, I don't regret it a single little bit. She's also got some speed to give me an advantage over a couple really slow things, including other Blissies as well. So... Uh, she can certainly afford a few points of HP to ensure a quicker recovery or an S-Toss finisher over something that may or may not be expecting it. So um, definitely solid utility. Um, I know it's a little bit horrorish, especially in... Ah, frog my throat. Especially in a mixed-tier match. So I honestly, in my matches, I really tried to not use her a lot. I tried to keep her hidden, try and not you know, throw her out as a last resort of just, eh, let's put Bliss out here. 
and I tried to use my other guys a lot. So honestly, I really didn't use Bliss nearly as much as I could have or should have. And uh, you know, I don't. I'm trying to not feel too as trying to not feel too bad about it as well. So um, I think it made a significant difference. And uh, you can never really argue with her power. Love her or hate her, she's just she's just that good. She's just the best. That's all there is to it. I freaking love that poke. However, we've got one final shining star. Let's take a closer look. Ah, Zapdos. I had no idea. Zapdos is pretty much God. Thor personally needs this bird as his mount, or at least a sidekick pet. I knew the thing was good. I knew it's annoying. I knew it was deadly. I knew it was versatile. But because I've never used a quote-unquote real one, I didn't know exactly how much until now. This bird edges out Blaziken for MVP by just being unbelievably amazing. She's so bulky on each side, yet super fast to sub roost stall so many guys. And with pressure, it's just wrong. Originally intended to have Life Orb like Melodic, I changed my mind thinking, eh, if Dose is going to be my main physical wall, I'm going to want more survivor survivability and better sub regeneration than uh, having Life Orb. So swapping items on those two pokes was definitely hit or miss. The first half of my games, uh, the bulk saved my life. No hands or no if ands or buts, no hands down about it. Um, whereas the lo loss of power wasn't really noticed at all. The second half of the games, Life Orb would have finished off many pokes that otherwise barely hung on, and uh, certainly um, would have been definitely beneficial in that regard. So I wouldn't suggest either one over the other 100% of the time for you guys. They're both absolutely great items, and I can't complain either way. Um, whichever way you want to go is definitely a great choice. So status obviously can hinder dose, but with a fast sub and aroma bliss, I wasn't too afraid. Um, if I can stay in and eat a Toxic while they sacrifice for it, and I finish them off thinking that they cripple my poke, I can troll on them later for it. It's just so demotivational and such a psychological blow to the other guy when they see that their hopes and dreams of several turns where they're thinking, God, I just need to inflict a crucial burn T-Wave Toxic somewhere on a poke to cripple it is just gone when they realize I didn't care about the status at all from the start. I just made them think that I cared and pretended to worry about it. So Zapdos is my only poke weak to SR, but because it's fast and roosty and resisting an amazing amount of attacks, she really isn't bothered by it all that much. So it's not too big of a deal. Um, she packs HP grass over HP ice for two reasons. Due to the 222 format, I expected zero Swamperts, but a handful of Gastrodons and Quagsires. Thus, I knew Zapdos would run into them regularly. HP Ice, I feel, is really only for D Knight and Gliscor, which Gliscor I'm not really afraid of anyway in this case. And D Knight is neutral to T Bolt, weak to SR, has Tauros to check him, Melodic to save me if necessary, etc. And that being said, um, I ended up seeing very little Gastrodon, go figure, and the ones that I did were unbelievably still able to take three or four hits to KO it with HP Grass, which blew my mind. So, meanwhile, HP Ice would have been so much more helpful in many cases, and uh, I just I didn't expect that. So, alas, what can you do? I don't regret it one bit. I blame the sample size. I'm sure if I played 100 matches, it would even out a little bit more. And uh, I also didn't like HP Ice for the IVs. You have to get to use it lowering a couple of stats that I want to use that I have EV investment in and I needed in, or as many EVs as I could get. I still feel like I want a few more defense, a few more special attack, a few more speed and uh, I only have 508 usable ones and I needed every point I could get. Um, grass was just a little bit better in the sense that it didn't lower as much stuff. So uh, when all was said and built, all these guys are done, my experience with these pokes was zero. I've never used Scarf Tauros, rarely used Tauros at all for that matter, never used a Queen, Melodic, a real Zapdos, um, never used Blaziken very much at all. So, um, this is pretty much, our, and even the Blissey was a brand new Bliss that combines a couple of my favorites with Counter and Aromatherapy. So I'm going into a format in which I don't know, I'm not familiar with the pokes, I don't know what to expect, I haven't used these guys whatsoever at all, I have no idea what's in store for me. So I didn't expect to just dominate everything, I wanted to win twice the games that I lost, aka go 4-2 and two in the tournament, or 8-4 and four overall, or 14-7 and seven type of stuff. 
and uh, over the course of my games. That was the goal as far as success goes. The goal was just to have a ton of fun, play a ton of guys, see a, bunch, a ton of new stuff. Um, and that was the reality of it. And uh, just some hella good fireworks shows for 4th Gen before 5th completely corrupted the uh, the world. And uh, that's where everyone went to, which is going to happen eventually. It, no, There's no way about it. So that's just the fact of the matter at hand. When I had built this team, I had absolutely no idea what a godly triangle of defense those three walls are going to be for me. Melodic, Zapdos, and Blissey. They are nearly impenetrable together. I'm not even kidding. They only go down by crits, it seems, almost all the time. And uh, as long as all three are up, the team is nearly insurmountable. Nidal, even Nidal Queen still features as a nice backup support to the triangle as well, supporting each of them in different ways. Um, not to mention not just damage with toxic spikes, but uh, an electric immunity, you know, a fighting resistance, stuff like that, uh, and all sorts of stuff. So being weak to ice, you know, having melodic resist ice, you know, just things of that nature, just really, really useful. Um, and then, of course, poison point showing up. Um, however, once the triangle is broken, there's definitely some holes pouring blood out of me. But at least by that point, you have to expect them to be breeding profusely as well. They're still definitely difficult pokes to take down in their own right, as all three of them can recover up. They all handle different guys and can just rote. Like, I, I seriously believe that you could switch between one of them every single turn and then heal up accordingly whenever you need to and just switch between them in a triangle that unless they have a stat-up move, you know, they just they won't be able to take them down, barring crits or, you know, stat boosting. And you can just do that and PP stall them all day long. Like, I seriously think that would be possible. They're just, they're so good that way. It's ridiculous. So, combining it with pressure, T-spikes, and occasional attack after recovering, it's just so difficult for teams without Wish or their own multi-recovery tag team to withstand the test of time against it. Um, the team was by no means intended to stall, but holy shit, can it ever stall. This team features my longest battles I've ever had, in a row, no less. And uh, it's also earned more 6-0 victories by itself than all my other videos combined. And I am not exaggerating. If not for my style of play, in which I like to use a fodder and sacrifice a guy to guarantee a safe win, as opposed to thinking, oh, you know, I'll risk it, try and spare 6-0, take some damage and see what happens, I could have gotten even more. This team... I. I'm just blown away by how much success I had with these guys. I had absolutely no idea. I hope this series ends up being everything that it was supposed to be. Obviously, there were a handful of setbacks, but I did my best to patch up a few holes and didn't just cut matches and fill them in. Um, my passion for the last four years has been to entertain, to battle, to win, and just everything over anyone and anything that I face while doing it in style, with class, in my own original way. And hope that you all enjoy as much as I do. You guys are my pride and joy, and nobody can ever take that away from me. Um, I got a few things I want to say. Uh, I apologize for never being the guy to upload every day. I'm so sorry for taking a year off in 2008, despite being unintentional technological problems. Um, I was just too lazy to get it back to work. I didn't want to put up with uh, shenanigans and all the effort that it would take to get back on track. Um, though I believe that break was much needed and is the only reason I could keep on going through now, um, I know YouTube in general and the community would have been so vastly different if that had never happened. I apologize to all of you who wanted a battle and never got it. I simply can't do it. I'm not like the other young kids out there who play matches every day, always involved, all, multiple matches every day, always involved and around. I just couldn't be like that. I put too much heart and soul and work into one little piece that I would be burned. I would have burned out years ago if I had tried to do that many more. Otherwise, I'm a quality over quantity type of guy, and if but for once in my life I'm not modest about something, it'll be that I firmly feel that I have the best YouTube provides. Um, I upload 95% of my battles. The only neglect that I, or the only ones that I neglect are ones for rare or strange occurrences in which it's either impossible to upload, gets deleted, or it's of such lackluster quality that I just don't even want to see it myself. Um, and it's just not worth the time and effort to watch. 
Um, I'm not one who is afraid to upload a loss or anything like that. So it's not like I, you know, tried to pick and choose and only do only play certain people and upload certain things. That's far from it. That's that's nothing. What you guys see on the channel, that's what I've played. Um, through the course of my career, I've averaged one and a half to two and a half battles a week. Um, probably closer to one and a half to two videos per week because that's all I've honestly played is one and a half to two battles a week. Um, you know, there's been times of more or less, of course, but uh, that's just the way it works. Um, I also personally need to apologize to Poke Mosh Pit and the heads involved. Um, I was led to believe originally that I would have a more significant role in the work than the role I was given, and uh, I felt deserving of something more that I had. Um, I felt that I was asked and needed to jumpstart it, and that it was such a significant big deal, and that I was really looking forward to you know helping it out as much as I could. And then as soon as all that help showed up there, and uh, I felt like I was just cut or stabbed in the back and felt cheated. Um, I felt like I was just pushed aside and, and used, really, to help support someone else's dream. And uh, I, I don't like that. I, I don't accept to be walked on. That's just not how I am. Um, I felt deserving more than what I had. I certainly admit that I didn't act like a knight in shining armor the whole time. Um, I know I acted sour, and I know I purposely broke a rule that I was aware of, of the class. Um, my goal at that point was for self-validation. Um, for when it was uploaded and people watched it, the entirety of Mosh hailed it as the best battle and with the highest quality narration and the best entertainment on the channel. And uh, I just had to prove it to myself, to you guys, to all of YouTube, that I knew I could do it. And I wanted to stick it in your face so bad. And uh, accomplishing that goal was just such a boost. And I knew that I didn't need to, you know, tie up any loose ends. I knew I could burn that bridge because I knew I had proved it to myself at that point of what I had done and what I could be capable of doing. Um, all of you guys who send me messages about how I've helped you learn and grow for four years, not just as a person but in pokes, at least once a week, somebody calls me their hero in a message. And I don't often reply, but believe me, I hear it, and it's unbearably humbling. Ever since I was a little kid, I've never felt like I had a hero. Only I had an older brother to look up to and copy off of. You know, he, I, was, I was a ditto. He, he's so much older than me, and he left for the army in Iraq when I was still a sapperling. I've always had to do things on my own since then. I've always, you know, had to cut my own path and be my own way and figure things out by myself. I've never had many friends or anyone to really lean on even to this day I don't have I don't have that rock anymore I had it once and I I blew that and she's gone um, so it's just it's so throbbing to hear when I've so directly helped somebody by something that I've done by the way that I am it's just you can't you can't put value on that you look lately at all the popular superhero movies that are coming out and you know they got these cheesy characters who play idiots or you know they're goofy and dumb and stupid and they just happen stance into some sort of power or you know situation or whatever and things just fall into place and get hollywoodized when their original counter comic parts the things that their core is built off of they, those superheroes they're men of class and character who stuck to their morals and fought for justice without expectation or desire for reward they were real characters to idolize and model after and I never had one I just I had to tough it out on my own even to this day I can't think of I can't think of one I really don't have anybody and I can never express nobody can ever express or validate how much it means and how severe it feels to be considered as one to something else I know a few of you guys have sent some very very intricate and touching messages where guys needed some help and I sent like a 15 page email back to you guys just pouring out giving you all the help I could have and uh, I know that's something no other YouTuber would be able to do at all or would for that matter um, my dad works in a nonprofit hospital my sister works in a nonprofit adoption agency and a nonprofit food bank for the needy my brother's a soldier 
My sister-in-law is a chef. My mother works in a hospital. She does research, research. She helps patients. I'm getting a degree in teaching. None of these jobs are selfish by any means. They're all low pay, high work, high difficulty, but it's the metaphysical rewards that you get from them that make it oh so worth it. Um, I've always been upset that I was turned down for partnership multiple times in the past and that uh, people ask, or you know, I've mentioned I, you know, people talk about getting paid for it and I tell them, I do get paid for it, I just don't get paid in money, I get paid other ways. My whole bloodline devotes their careers towards other people. I don't want to waste my time doing something that isn't worth the effort. So when I set my mind to it, or I put my blood, sweat, and tears into my work, whatever it may be, so that I do the best that I can, and then I strive to make it better. I've always tried to live without regrets in all phases of my life. I make sure to analyze the situation, extrapolate possible consequence scenarios from different paths, evaluate which course of action is most superior, such that if something ends up being unoptimal, I cannot ever fault myself for making what I believe to be the best decision at that time. Um, I only have one Pokemon regret. I never got to fight ZMT. There were times we were going to, we failed to follow it through. There were times I was scared of you. <laughs> and uh, I'll be a man, I can own up to that, I admit it. Um, I felt that we had such a similar style of play that I loved watching you play others. I could only imagine what I would have done in your scenarios and what different what different moves I would have taken. And, and it was almost always the same, and you almost always won. And I truly believe that we could have beat anybody that we ever got up against. And, you know, if we played ten matches, we'd win at least five. I'd expect to win at least six. That's just how it is. I felt that I could have beaten those who beat you, that a few moves I would have done differently would have made the difference. But I feel that to this day, in our mirror match of sorts, if we were ever to have had one, that you would have had the slight edge, and I was afraid of that. I couldn't bear the thought of playing you and not winning. Uh, I wish I pulled the trigger when I had the chance. Um, I wish you and TSP wouldn't have closed your accounts so that kids today could see real videos, grasp the history and the power of the golden age. I'm sure the game today will soar to new heights, New players will step up. YouTube community will grow even bigger than ever. But like Sir Isaac Newton once said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Not because others necessarily have better vision or are taller than the, those who came before them. There's a reason people take great care or pay big bucks for classics and antiques. You know, the, the meme of the good old days. There's, there's a reason for stuff like that. So if you're out there, ZMT, or someone watching this video knows him personally, has a method of contact with him, uh, pass the message along, you know, please hit me up, man. Um, maybe we can work something out just just for kicks, just just to fill that void, that, that lone achievement I have not unlocked. Please hit me up if you can. Um, upcoming in this near future is what I hope to be the best series that I've ever posted and perhaps my most favorite team. Even more so than my infamous Psycho team. It really goes to show that when you make all your dudes 100% original, it just tugs you that much closer to the heart, it means that much more, you can have that much more success, and they legitimately are just that much better. I've always felt that most of the battle is won before Wi-Fi is ever involved. I never claim to be the best, those who know me well and are around me a lot know that I don't ever boast or proclaim highly of myself. Hell, guys in the Zat, you know that I'm always telling them, like, I suck, are you kidding? I don't know why you guys watch me. Um, just stuff like that. I'm always forgetting just the dumbest things and missing stupid little details, you know. So by no means do I ever proclaim to be, you know, the god king of junk. You know, that's you guys saying that stuff, it ain't me. But I do believe that my best skill comes in team making, spread allocation, with unique twists and turns of the utmost minor significance making all the difference in the world. And this is the advantage legit players have over savers. We know much more on an inter intricate level what our pokes are capable of. We got one shot to build them right and we gotta build them perfectly. We can't just save new ones with a few minor changes each time when something doesn't work or scrap it. We gotta roll with it and stick with it and make it the best we can the first time we get it because it's what we're gonna have and uh, I feel like that's just 
a viewpoint that most people don't even think of or wouldn't even believe in this day and age that somebody who breeds and trains their guys the old-fashioned hard way has an advantage over those who save because he put forth something in making that team that the other guy didn't have. I don't even think people would believe that that means anything at this point. They'd rather just rate my team a, you know, OU out of 10 and 31 all and just roll from there. Um, that's just the way things are now. Um, I may never have fully learned or adapted to all the new adaptations that Platinum and Heart Gold Soul Silver brought to the table, but instead I took with me a different perspective. That the guy on the other side of the field, he's only got six guys. I don't need to worry about the rest of the metagame that I don't know about. I don't need to worry about the 487 dudes that he doesn't have. I just need to worry about the one I'm looking at right now, and that one's got four moves. And what he might switch to, which you know I may or may not know, and not all of them are even going to be good moves, so not all of his options are even really options at any given point in time. From there, you can make assumptions of moves and stats and styles based on what you've already seen from the moves of not just the poke you're looking at, but his other pokes, what else he's got on the team, how else he's already played, and just you can kind of trap or fill everything together into a camaraderie of what void would it fill the best, how would it adapt the best logically to itself, to its own team, and uh, just go from there. And that's how I figure things out. Even if I don't know what it can do or what's going on, I don't have to know exactly. I just have to know an idea. I just have to have a concept and a path to walk down on, and that's where I can get success out of it for. I expect to outthink people. I may not always make surprise moves, but oftentimes, even if I tell you what I'm going to do, you still have to try and stop it, and you might not have a good solution. There may not be an answer. Like, unless you have a ghost, there's no good response to a dynamic punch from a champ. I guess except for Slowbro, who is just absolutely ridiculously awesome. That, uh, that's about all there is to it. That's the only good response to Machamp that I can think of. And that's about it. Or, I mean, to Dyna and you get the point, at least. You know, even if you know exactly what's coming, you can't always deal with it. Just because you know a Breloom is going to sub, spore, leech seed, focus punch you, holy crap, you stupid cat, just because you know what it's going to do, doesn't mean you can do anything about it. Even if your team has something to do something about it, he's not going to use it until he knows it's safe, and thus you don't have anything to do about it. And therefore, for reasons like that, theory mining is worthless. It's not the way to go. There are countless intangibles that change every turn. Don't waste your breath. Um, you got to think just one or two turns at a time. You know, you can't ever, you can't ever validate the gut feeling you have in the hot seat of the battle that you don't get when you're watching a video, when you're talking to a guy in a match and you know helping his play-by-play, -play, whatever. Even when you're looking back at your own video yourself and thinking about it. You know, hindsight is always 20-20. Um, you can't ever account for all that crap. You know, things played out the way they did because of intangibles that change all the time. And you never know when hacks is going to come. And I've had my share of hacks come my way. But I've always had an uncanny ability to force misplays from my opponent and worm my way back into things. There's been matches where I had no business winning, and I somehow force it back to a coin flip chance at the end. Do I win or do I lose? And all, more often than not, I'd say, I somehow pull out a win when I really shouldn't have. I don't know if that's just a Tiger Woods effect or if that... I don't know what, but, you know, it's just a matter of what can you do at that point? You know, what does he think? you got to you got to think about what he's thinking as well from his perspective. You know, he doesn't know what you may or may not have. He may be thinking you're going to do one thing, you know, etc. I hate the term overpredict. Oh, I overpredicted because blah, blah, blah. That's a single-minded train of thought. Maybe he expected that you would overpredict, and thus that's just him outpredicting you. That's a good play on his part, not a mistake on your part. Eventually, you get to a rock, paper, scissors thing out here. If I predict this and he predicts that and I predict that he's going to predict that, we're back to where we started as if we just did the obvious in the, in the first place. So I hate crap like that. Sometimes you just got to tip your hat and give a good move to the other guy. You know, sometimes your guys are, are intended to do a job and to beat his. 
and his guys are intended to do a job and be yours too. So sometimes you just have to lose a guy. Sometimes his just does the job against you, and you got to work your way back. And that's just the way it is, you know? There's there's not a counter to everything. There's not an answer to everything. In theory, mod, it, it seems like everybody's got eight moves, and everybody has 11 pokes on their team. And choice users can switch moves. That's the way it feels. Oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, but if you're going to do that, then I would do this instead. It's like, shut the hell up. You did not do that. So bite me, you know? Crap like that doesn't work. doesn't happen. Um, I guess a few little pointers and, I don't know, tips of advice. I, whatever. Don't ever underestimate yourself, guys. Um, not just in, in this, but in life. Be confident in all that you do. Even if you're not certain, act with conviction. Raise your hand and guess strongly and be wrong proudly. Instead of just curl up in the corner and wait for someone else to take a stand and take a shot at it. It's better to be... You know, it's better to be the other guy instead. Act strong, but absolutely never be arrogant. There is a fine line, and it should not be crossed. There is a difference. I love the hell out of all of you guys. These last four years have had a lot of ups and downs, been some of the worst and some of the best moments of my life, and all of you have definitely helped make it one of the best times of my life, in which I learned so much from you guys as well, and I can take so many things away from it, and I grew in so many ways and experiences that I never would have dreamed possible. You guys aren't the only ones who gain things out of this. Things that I can carry with myself, with every step that I take, with every beat of my heart, and every day that I wake up if the sun comes up for the rest of my life. Examples that I can use in other facets of my life, and things that I can apply to, that I can work and get advantages of later on, that other people aren't going to have. Experiences and all sorts of other things. Sing like no one's listening. Play your music like nobody else cares. If no one else is there. No one else hates it. Dance like nobody is watching. Other people aren't going to really... I mean, there's sometimes where I'll do something stupid or embarrassing, or you watch somebody do something stupid or embarrassing, and, you know, they're like, oh, no, you can just tell that they feel like they have a thousand eyes on them, and everyone else just looks and goes, oh, huh, you know, that's too bad, or, oh, I'm glad it didn't happen to me, or, wow, you know, look at them recover from that, etc., they walk away and then it's gone. The thought is out of their head. It's not, it, you know, it's not a big deal. So, with that, I bid you all another thanks for sticking with me as I've stuck with you. In this video, as a microcosm of my channel as a whole, I hope you guys enjoy the upcoming videos. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. So until next time, guys, peace.